So let's talk about an actually good image series. So Aphrodite V from their Top Cow imprint. <clears throat> so Aphrodite, I, I don't know anything about the old Aphrodite 9 comics. Um, I've, I looked them up just to get a sense of what <laughs> some elements of this comic we're talking about. Uh, but there used to be a comic published back in, I don't know, early 2000s called Aphrodite 9. Uh, it was about a killer fembot that uh, was, I don't know, had grown a conscience or something. Uh, she was, of course, drawn in a really revealing outfit and kind of really ridiculous situations. I never read the series, so I, it might have been actually really good. I don't really know. I just know the covers for it make it look a little bit more ridiculous than even a lot of other uh, image comics from the, the 90s and early 2000s. So the writer here is Brian Edward Hill. And Brian Edward Hill has become, if you're not on Twitter a lot, he's become kind of a guy that a lot of us, or a lot of us in this comic skate thing are starting to look at with uh, um, some appreciation. I wouldn't say at all that he's one of us. He doesn't at all try to hide his pretty staunchly left-wing politics. Uh, but he does talk about like what makes a good story, what kind of things should go into a story to make it readable about making a, a story appeal to um, a mass audience rather than making it his own weird political treatise and a lot of other things about how to actually write uh, superhero comics. Uh, he's His big thing right now is that he's writing detective comics, which uh, a lot of people really like. I'm not personally reading it, but a lot of people really like it. Diversity in Comics has talked about it. Yellow Flash has talked about it. But I haven't actually... This is the first thing of his that I've read. And uh, it is kind of interesting. So it opens with this uh, memo that where they basically say that you don't have to be familiar with the any of the other series about Aphrodite. That uh, this this whole world here, you, you don't have to be overly familiar with it to read this comic. And in point of fact, it may actually contradict those comics, but it's not really intended to be like a strict inline continuity. So it opens with this conversation between um, the main character and um, on the one hand this the conversation that the rich white guy and the gay black uh, millennial billionaire um, it's very very politically charged and in any other comic the the black guy would be obviously in the right and the white guy would be the obvious bad guy um, but the thing is that on the one hand the the white guy says a lot of like really kind of cliched things. Uh, the guy mentions that he graduated from MIT when he was 13, to which the guy says, good for you, I'm sure you're the crown jewel of their diversity program. And a lot of other sort of like pretty blatantly racist things like that. And just talking about how he's, this guy, you know, he's a radical, he doesn't play by the rules, he doesn't, uh, he messes with the wrong people, that sort of thing. But the thing is, what this guy actually wants to do is that he wants to privatize the Los Angeles Police Department, which, do you remember, was the plot to RoboCop. <laughs> the white guy here is talking about, even though he's constantly denigrating Martin, um, he talks about how bad of an idea that is <laughs> and how arrogant this guy is for thinking that he can make it work. So even though the white guy comes across as kind of like an obvious bad guy, he's actually right, and the the guy who fits all of the uh, diversity checkpoints things is actually wrong. He has this really dumb idea that he's gonna privatize the police department and make it if I mean I'm, I'm you know basically conservative and in a lot of ways libertarian but uh, even I can see why uh, the police is one of the essential functions of uh, either a state or a municipality. So um, yeah, of all the things you want to privatize that's probably the worst idea. So it turns out that he has this bodyguard named um I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but it's uh, spelled Hui Men, who, which is a Chinese name, but she doesn't look very Chinese to me. I don't, I don't know, whatever, maybe I'm just wrong. So there's an assassination attempt by, on him by some people, who knows who, and then that's when we meet Aphrodite V, Aphrodite V. Uh, actually, when this cover was first solicited, when I first noticed this being, I think, on the Image Twitter account... I didn't notice that the side of her head was shaved. <laughs> um, I didn't really notice that till after I bought it, actually. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate. I don't really fully understand why. We do learn her backstory in fairly short order, though. 
which is that she was put together by this corporation to be an assassin bot, somebody that could get in close that wouldn't arouse suspicion, that would be able to um, charm targets and then kill them. And she could kill one person fairly easily, or she can kill lots of people fairly easily, because, you know, her being a android. Don't really know why her face is the way that it is. Um, so there's not, there's not really a good reason why <laughs> her head is shaped like that. Uh, in point of fact, I thought it would, if anything, make it easier to identify her. So I'm not sure why you would do that. But uh, in any case, um, she saves uh, the main character, Martin, from being assassinated by these dudes. Uh, she does it basically because... Uh, not so much because she likes him, but because I guess she figured that if he was the target of assassination by... Uh, whomever these people are, then he must not be a completely bad guy. And so he tries to hire her for his uh, his company, for his initiative, and she just isn't having it. But at the end of the comic, they actually they do come together in some kind of arrangement. Um, on the one hand, there are a lot of things that about this comic that are sort of... In any other situation, they would be annoying. Like, like I said, the side of her head shape, that actually does annoy me. <laughs> it does. Um... And then the the very, very politically charged nature of it, uh, I don't know exactly how far it's going to get into that. I've never read the old Aphrodite series, but it, I mean, the comic makes a point to try to distance itself from those older series in the very first page. So I really don't, uh, there's a lot of things about this that would normally be really, really annoying. But here, uh, none of it's a deal breaker because of how well it's written. And the art, I don't know, the art, uh, I don't know if these faces are traced or not. They are certainly very detailed, um, which would send to, tend to indicate that they are. But even then, it's like you get a lot of scenes like this, too. So even if it is kind of traced, it could still be, um, <laughs> there are worse ways to do that. And obviously you can see that a lot happens in this comic, not only in terms of plot, but in terms of just, you know, just sheer um, action things happening. Uh, so this it, they pack a lot of story and a lot of things and a lot of things to like in this fairly short amount of uh, page space. So, uh, overall, yeah, there is a lot to like about this. And the fact that Brian Edward Hill has kind of going against the grain of a lot of his uh, contemporary comics creators. Not that he's, you know, forward slash our guy or anything. And I, I would not at all say that Brian Edward Hill is quote-unquote one of us. But... He can write a lot better than a lot of his peers can, which is saying something. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, don't really have too much to say about this one. It's always harder to find things to say about uh, things that you basically like versus things that you don't like. But, uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Um, tell me if you're reading this comic. Tell me what you think about Brian Hill or artist Jeff Spokes or uh, anything like that. Um, like, comment, subscribe. In any case, this is Unring Chevron signing off.